Okay, so uh, every, every year I update this course a little bit. Uh, so um, because I did the last time the page rank and introduced the notion of a Markov chain, I have decided to present you another application of Markov chains that is extremely, extremely important, uh, <coughs> namely something called the hidden Markov models. So, um, so uh, I also made the notes for uh, for this uh, bit, uh, but I didn't get around to put them on the web, but I will polish them quickly after the class and uh, the notes will be on the web today for sure. So, <coughs> just to remind you quickly, um, uh, what are Markov chains? Right, so they are described by giving the set of states uh, S equals the set of uh, state S1, S2, say up to state SK. Uh, usually we are given also uh, initial uh, probabilities um, say let's call it i equals uh, pi 1 pi 2 up to pi k and uh, then we are given a uh, matrix uh, say M, that consists of probabilities indexed by pi pij that is interpreted as follows. This is probability that from state Si, the Markov chain will transition into state uh, Sj. Right. So, um, in our case, so our uh, Google example, page rank example. Uh, uh, states are, or correspond, better to say, to uh, web pages, right? Um, so we will say that. So our random surfer uh, can be at the state uh, S1. This means that the, the random surfer is at the moment at the web page S1, right? So now, uh, in our example, initial probabilities uh, are uh, all equal, so i is uh, uh, just 1 over n uh, when uh, for all i between 1 and n, where n is the number of uh, all web pages. Right. So what does this mean? It means that our random surfer picks a web page at random with uniform probability. So he can start his surfing 
from any web page with equal probability 1 over the total number of web pages, right? And then Markov chain, uh, our surfer is seen as a Markov chain undergoes evolution uh, in which states change according to which web page he visits. So if, uh, if he is at S1 and then uh, clicks web page S5, uh, right, this means that the next um, state will be exactly this. So uh, say SI1, SI2, up to SIT uh, is uh, a surfing history. And uh, this is a, a run of a, a Markov chain. So Markov chain started at a web page SI1, then he clicked the link to page uh, I2, or decided randomly to jump to page I2, and so forth. And we saw that uh, this uh, probability Ij uh, is equal uh, alpha times, uh, um, uh, how shall we, uh, OK, so this matrix. Uh, over i j is equal to alpha times g0 plus 1 over n uh, dangling times uh, e transposed right um, plus um, 1 minus alpha divided by n uh, times e E transpose. So uh, you remember in the, our picture, right? Uh, whenever uh, we will have uh, uh, one minus alpha uh, divided by n, wherever the zeros were, uh, one minus alpha divided by n. This is for pi. And then uh, somewhere here will be alpha times 1 over the number of outgoing links of pi plus 1 minus alpha divided by n, right? Uh, right, this is depending. Uh, uh, where uh, whether uh, the original matrix, wherever it was 0 and 1 over pi, it becomes this, and then so forth, right? Uh, this, give, this tells us that if the surfer is in the state pi, if, it's, if he is visiting state pi, with a small probability, 1 minus alpha, it can jump to a random web page, or with probability alpha, it can follow uh, the link, right? So if you look at the picture, this will be like that. If this is pi, then with a weak probability, he can jump to absolutely any other web page starting from p1 all the way to pn. But then, right with probability, 1 minus alpha divided by n, and then with a larger probability, namely alpha divided by the number of outgoing links of uh, pi uh, plus 1 minus alpha divided by n, uh, it can jump to the page uh, pj if there exists uh, uh, a link between uh, pi and pj, yeah? right? And then what we showed is something really, really important. Uh, that uh, for this matrix, uh, um, there exists a unique 
uh, uh, a sequence of probabilities. Uh, we call them a row, right? That satisfy that they are fixed point of this matrix, right? That uh, you will have that uh, row of uh, um, of page P J uh, is uh, equal to um, sum um, alpha over number of outgoing links of uh, uh, pi times rho of uh, pi plus we will have uh, uh, 1 minus alpha uh, divided by n and then over all possible web pages, right? Um, so, um, so essentially, and then we saw, right, if you start with an initial distribution, rho zero, that is uniform, your random surfer can be at uh, uh, any web page with equal probability, right? Then the probabilities after n many clicks, right? Probabilities after uh, this don't work. So probability after n many clicks. So okay. Uh, let's write it in vector form. Okay, is equal rho zero, right? Times this matrix to the power. Uh, k and as k grows, uh, if it's larger and larger, then uh, these guys, these ranks, uh, stabilize uh, to a unique distribution of uh, <coughs> of uh, probabilities. What does this mean? If you uh, if your surfer starts at any web page whatsoever, and you let it serve for a long period of time and then at some random moment you stop him. Probability that he will be at a particular web page row j at that given moment will be the same regardless of his surfing history, right? For as long as the number of uh, the evolution Right of his surfing as long as the history of his surfing is uh, long enough, and this probability is what we call page rank. Right. So there, uh, the Markov chain had very uh, direct interpretation. Markov chain, uh, uh, your Markov chain is in a state pi, if and only if your random surfer is at the moment visiting page pi. Um, initial probabilities are how the random surfer starts the surfing, we assume here, and it doesn't matter, no matter what rho zero is, this will always converge to the same vector, right? So we can assume, if we assume that he randomly picks starting page, this will be <coughs> a vector of uniform uh, probabilities. And what are probabilities to go from one page to another, uh, well, probabil probability to, uh, uh, to go from, so probability to go from i into j is uh, 1 minus alpha divided by n uh, if uh, I um, has a link, so PI has a link to PJ. Sorry, if it has no link, uh, and it is equal alpha divided by outgoing uh, number of outgoing links of uh, PI. Uh, if uh, pi uh, plus 
uh, 1 minus alpha divided by n. If pi has a uh, link uh, to pj, right? Uh, because then um, the surfer can either follow the link uh, to web page pi with probability alpha over the number of outgoing links, or it can randomly jump to very same web page. If there is no link, he can arrive to, another, to web page pj only if it he takes this random jump. Okay, are you with me with the model? And so how is the page rank uh, calculated? Uh, you simply use this formula when k is about uh, of order of magnitude 100, I think uh, say about 100. Uh, and you simply compute this rho zero times uh, g, so you multiply rho 0 by g, then you multiply this vector by g, and then you so forth, you multiply by g, because this way, if you uh, group the brackets from left to right, this will be always a vector. So this multiplication can be done extremely fast. Right? And when k is large enough, these numbers eventually stabilize, and this is our page rank. Okay, so this is one model of uh, um, Markov chains. The next important example that uh, I decided to add to this material, because artificial intelligence is so a uh, hot topic is something called hidden, uh, is this how you spell hidden, double D, right? Yeah. Hidden Markov models. So, <clears throat> hidden Markov models essentially uh, formalize our intuition of measurement of a process that we do not have direct access to, right? And this always happens when you deal with something uh, physical, right? You have to do measurements. Um, and the only way that you can kind of guess what is the state of the system is to perform a measurement. But whenever you perform a measurement, there is noise, right? So the measurement is, you are not 100% guarantee that the measurement will faithfully reflect what you are measuring. There will be always some errors, right? Uh, so to give you an example, the best example is uh, speech recognition. And in fact, introducing hidden Markov models, but I forget the name of this guy, revolutionized uh, speech recognition and he had a startup that uh, produced this software for uh, speech recognition that beat everyone else. And uh, then he sold uh, the startup, but uh, uh, the banking company, I, I guess it was, um, uh, I forget one of these big banks uh, who organized the sale, uh, didn't do right uh, diligence, and they sold it to, to uh, an outfit that collapsed immediately after that. And I think at the end, he ended up not making any money. Uh, actually, it's a couple, uh, husband and wife. Uh, but the revolution that they introduced was to use Marco, hidden Markov model for speech recognition. What is the, uh, the, uh, the hidden Markov model? You see, let's take the speech recognition example. Uh, say, consider utterance of the following sentence. I love algorithms. Right? When I say I love algorithms, how do you understand what I am saying? You don't have access to what sentence is in my head, right? In my mind. 
you can only hear a physical manifestation of the sentence that I have in my mind. So what do you get? Uh, if, if this is to be recognized by a machine, uh, you have a microphone and you can record the, the, the waveform that uh, uh, consists of sampled values of the speech signal, right? So on the output of the microphone, right? So here is me, right? And then here is the microphone, uh, right? And uh, uh, here is a analog to digital converter, and you get the sequence of uh, uh, samples of the voltage, right? And now the machine has to figure out what I was saying on the basis of this waveform, okay? Now, what is human speech? Human speech, so to speak, elementary particle of human speech is called a phoneme. What's a phoneme? Well, there is actually no complete consensus of what constitutes a phoneme. So, but what you can, the way to think about phonemes is basic sounds of a language, right? Uh, that have the property that if you replace one phoneme with another, the meaning changes, uh, right? So, for example, if I pronounce love, uh, probably I sound, not probably, but definitely, I know it for a fact, I, speak, I sound very different from a native speaker. So I kind of mutilate uh, these phonemes, uh, right? I mutilate them, but not enough. The sound didn't change enough so that you get confused as what I am saying, right? Uh, <coughs> so uh, one example is... Uh, and this is from the Wikipedia, and it's kind of a bit morbid, but I'll use the same, is uh, the difference between kiss and uh, kill. Uh, so, you see, uh, just one, so this is usually denoted like this, uh, uh, kiss, uh, and here you have L. So only I swapped phoneme with the phoneme L, right? And the meaning changed. So these are, so to speak, elementary particles of human speech. And in your mind, when you listen to me, you first parse this audio signal into phonemes, which is a non-trivial task. Uh, on itself, right? For example, uh, if this is the waveform, where does kill, uh, sorry, where does K start and where does it end? Where I uh, starts and where S uh, starts. So you have to have a kind of a pre-processing of uh, um, the signal to kind of try to partition it uh, into pieces that each corresponds to a phoneme, right? Now, what do you do with a particular squiggly waveform, right? In order to associate it with I or with kiss here, well, you do feature extraction, and this is usually done by taking the discrete Fourier transform of the of this piece because things are more apparent in what's called in frequency. You know, frequency, you remember from Fourier, uh, discrete Fourier transform, uh, the coefficients tell you uh, what are the amplitudes of harmonic oscillations present. Uh, yes? But different people speak in like, different frequencies. Very good. So yes. that's a, the, what makes this uh, problem tough. You have to, you, people speak with different pitch, right, different frequencies, and you have foreigners, and amazingly enough, you know, when I speak to my Siri, right, it, uh, it uh, has no problem 
understanding what I am saying, even though I speak with a very heavy accent, right? So this is where the real art starts. What are the features that are invariant with respect to what particular pitch I speak, right? So uh, uh, then after partitioning, each of these uh, is mapped uh, into a feature vector f1, uh, f2, and then here uh, f3, right? And this feature vector has to be robust with respect of variations between the speakers, but it should not confuse different phonemes. And this is, uh, these guys, how to get these guys is what makes uh, the speech recognition problem so tough, right? Now, how is this uh, related to uh, Markov chains, right? Um, you can think of uh, my utterance as an evolution of a Markov chain that consists of individual uh, phonemes. <laughs> so I love algorithms. Uh, has first phoneme a diphthong, what's called diphthong I. Right? It's a kind of single, it's not A, E, it's I. Right? Then here we will have phoneme, we will have phoneme L, then a phoneme A. So let's denote it like this. And then a phoneme V. And of course this is mute. And then here we have A, L, G, where this uh, denotes sound G, right? I'll go uh, R. E, where this I is actually for the vowel E, uh, and then F, right? Uh, and then M and S, right? Now, this can be seen, so, the, so this is a, a um, sentence. This is phonetic utterance right and it's a sequence of phonemes so this can be seen as a mark of chain that involves from this phoneme into phoneme L phoneme A phoneme V then pause, and then again phoneme A, right? And so forth at the end will be phoneme S. Now, in order for this to be of any um, kind of value, it has to correspond to the nature of speech. Because when I speak, I don't concatenate random phonemes, right? Uh, so, um, for each phoneme, there is a different probability. So, say phoneme, uh, uh, phoneme uh, A, so phoneme I, uh, there is one probability uh, that uh, 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 that the next poem will be L. Another probability that the next phoneme will be say K. Uh, another probability that is again the same phoneme and so forth. And what you can do, and this is crucial for the solution that this guy proposed. <coughs> First, you have to trans, 
laid a large volume of uh, humans, intelligible human speech into a phonetic alphabet that, that uh, has uh, uh, notation for each of the phonemes. And this, there are several of them. One of them is uh, just, phon it's called, I think, phonetic alphabet, right? Uh, that uh, has a symbol essentially for all sounds in, the, I believe, if not all, then almost all human languages, right? So then you have to take sentences, uh, right, and count how many times after I, for example, uh, a uh, break came, like here, right? Here there is space, understood, right? Uh, and so forth, so, uh, so this, we can call it silent, right? So you can build uh, simply by considering a large corpus of spoken sentences, uh, you can build a table of probabilities uh, how likely is each phoneme to follow from any <coughs> other phoneme. And this table of uh, uh, probabilities uh, that phoneme PH1 or P of PHI uh, is followed by a phoneme PHJ is the matrix uh, of uh, the Markov chain. So you see, uh, for a sentence, you cannot guess what I want to say. So in some sense, my, the phonemes of my speech are almost randomly distributed, except that, that after uh, uh, each phoneme probability of any other phoneme might be, these probabilities might are uh, very different, right? Um, also, the, uh, the starting, what is the starting phoneme? You can also take a bookkeeping. What are the initial phonemes of a very large number of sentences? And again, get these probabilities. You see probabilities. So these states in this example will be phonemes of, say, English language, right? Uh, Pies will be probabilities uh, that my utterance uh, starts with that particular phoneme. I will be much more likely than, for example, sounds or uh, whatever, uh, you know. So these are initial probabilities. And now you can assign, you can compute for any evolution of uh, a Markov chain, you can compute uh, probability pi of the phoneme uh, of the first phoneme, then probability that you are here uh, uh, can, can be computed from the probability of transitioning so probability of transitioning between phoneme 1 into this phoneme uh, 2 and so forth, making a product of uh, um, all these uh, uh, probabilities. So any sequence of, uh, of, uh, um, uh, of um, phonemes can be assigned a probability of an utterance like that to appear in human speech. Yes? Um, however, I don't really understand why it has to be, like, why do you say it's a Markov chain? 
Because, for example, if we finish maybe two thirds of the sentence, then by semantics we'll be able to sort of like guess that. Okay, very good. So very good. So this is just a building block for the whole system that has serious <coughs> shortcomings. Uh, so, uh, for example, the sequence of utterances, you can judge them how likely they are, not by just what was the previous phoneme, but for example, you parse in your head the first part and you can immediately kind of change the probabilities of subsequent phoneme depending on what you've seen. Yes? So are we using the fact that even though human speech might be randomly distributed, we're like, uh, the English language itself is not random? Uh, yes, yes. So, but at the moment, this non-randomness is uh, given uh, in a very weak way, right? The only constraint that comes from the particular language is only embedded in the transition probabilities for from one form to the other form. So that's extremely rudimentary uh, encoding of the features of a language. Yes? Uh, are we to assume that after, like, for example, a long sequence of phonetic utterances, uh, the, the ranks will converge to a stable vector? No. No. So in this case, we will not play with the um, with, uh, uh, I mean, okay, so it is true in a sense uh, that the probabilities it will converge if the sequence is completely, is very long, simply because eventually the probabilities will converge to general probabilities of each phoneme appearing in the human speech. But here, unfortunately, right when you have to uh, recognize a, sec a sentence, you have only a very short run. Yeah. And so this will be a totally different aspect, kind of complementary to uh, what you mentioned. So you see, uh, and to answer your question, you, okay, you have these uh, you know, uh, cameras nowadays. Uh, and when you take a group photo, uh, the thing actually, to my amazement, I have to say, correctly finds the faces, right? How is this done? You would be amazed how this is done. This is done by boosting, namely you have gazillion of uh, uh, features that are extraordinarily simple. For example, that there should be, say, some symmetry between left and right side. Uh, so very, very crude pixel-wise regularity.